Good afternoon. My name is Brett T. Evans with Truck Trend Magazine. We are here in Moorpark, California with this beautiful machine, the Earth Cruiser EXP. As you uh, might be able to tell, it's based on the Mitsubishi Fuso um, van chassis. This is a four-wheel drive machine and we've had a great time cruising around these hills and uh, we're just going to step in real quick and have a chat with Lance, the company's CEO, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit more. G'day, g'day. Thanks for uh, spending some time with us. So, yep, as uh, Brett said, we've got here some Earth Cruiser EXP, and this particular vehicle, we just got back from Malaysia. We had some great time with some good friends over there in the Rainforest Challenge, and so uh, it's, uh, for us, this life is absolutely about living. We want to get out and have some fun, and to do that, we need a really full drive, we need something that can fit inside a shipping container, and we need something to keep my wife happy. That means a comfortable living space inside, and that's what we're great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your company and, uh, and how you guys got to where you are? Yeah, of course not, right? So, um, I'm not from around here, but um, we live here in lucky enough now to live in the United States. I uh, come from Australia, and we have we have a small company called Earth Cruiser, and it's located in Bend, Oregon. And Bend's a great place for us because we get the um, we get the best of the outdoors as far as I'm concerned. We get we get the snow, so we can really do our R&D and research on the plan the outdoors and do the off-roading and four-wheel driving stuff that we really want to do. So that's where our company is based. So let's do a quick, uh, just let's do an exterior walk around. You can kind of point out some of the features, features of this truck that make it uniquely suited for uh, for what you Absolutely. what you guys like to do. Absolutely. So first off, uh, so as we said, the Earth Cruiser needs to be able to fit inside a shipping container to make it easy to easy to travel overseas. And even if that's not what it suits you, the vehicle is just a little over 21 foot long. So that basically means it fits in an all-size car like a car space. That's a really important. on the rear wheels to make them single and so we've got a track that's almost identical front to rear and the actual wheel track itself is very close to a Land Cruiser so that's really important if you want to follow that normal road that you know that off-road track you can you know if you start to the side it's not a great idea you, you, you don't you don't want to be grabbing so keep some of these basic things you know, every off-roader knows that's what you want to do and so that was where we started from we wanted to keep a vehicle that was easy to maintain, Fuso makes sense, it's a great little diesel motor in there, it's got tons of torque for the size as you can attest, it just, just, it just chugs along and does its thing, which is really nice. The cab over gives us that short length so we've got more space inside to make it comfortable for extended stays, extended travel. With the big windscreen, as you know, you've got that panoramic view, it's just fabulous. So, um, perhaps you want to just jump on that. To give the audience a bit of an idea of what we're talking about. Yeah, so we uh, we did take this for a spin a minute ago. Sorry about the jostling. And um, you know, with with these big windows and with this big winch windshield, you just I mean, you can first you can see everything all over the place. You can see right down in front of you, so you know exactly where you are. And uh, and once you get where you're going, you just have this amazing view. We're we're in Moore Park, and so we've got some. Some fantastic views right here, and and Lance was just telling me that he and his wife have been staying right up here, not 50 feet away, and just waking up to this every single morning. Thanks in part to, you know, this, this machine's just fabulous visibility. It's just a really, really great truck. And while we're in here, I'm just going to show off my favorite feature. That, my friends, is a dogleg five-speed manual transmission. You don't see that in any RV anymore, except for this one. And uh, and it, it works pretty well. I'm I admit I am a novice with the uh, unsynchronized first gear, but it was it was so easy to drive and just tons of torque, like he was saying. From that, it's a five liter. You said this one's a five liter. Yeah. Yep. So just a just an absolutely great truck to drive. Really, really easy. So there you go, Darlene. There's your inside of the truck. Anyway. So um, let's keep 
infrared so we don't need to turn any lights on now let's go inside so it's going to be quite nice for battery stealth camping simple things you know um with supplementary lights up the top so if you're you know traveling down a, a rocky creek bed or something you, you're up here in water so the people following you can see where you're going you need some backup lights so you actually see what's going on very cool uh, more storage under here more storage under here Hookups, we don't need any of that. These things can literally just live wherever they want to. There's no generators necessary, there's no propane on these things. Everything is solar and diesel powered, and nothing else. Very cool. Uh, second other tank, all of them are fitted factory with snorkels. Uh, we have a very comfortable forwarding depth, uh, as you'll see, you know, gas pipe brush uh, shots. Um, the suspension is completely rebuilt under our specs just so we get that. Side, you're not getting that lurching and well, you drove, you know what I mean. You know, it, 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 you want, um, certainly in a sports car, but it's still intimidating. It doesn't get thrown around at all. Yeah, we, we did a couple, we got a little crossed up on some, some bridge crossings, and, and you don't have that terrifying terrifying feeling when one wheel lifts and another one sinks. And it's very, very stable, good to drive. What is the fording depth? Do you have a do you have a quarter number? Okay, or a, well, a okay. Guess? So, on a new chassis, the, and I think Lancers might be the same. I can't remember, but um, Fuso will not warrant anything above the hubs. Okay. All right. Okay. In testing, I've had it up to the Yep. Oh wow. Uh, so that's um, I wouldn't recommend that, sure. but uh, it's I can tell you from personal experience, it's been done. Okay. Noted. Step in on this. Uh, you uh, you step into the into the bathroom, and he's going to show a pretty cool feature that this bathroom has that uh, that was born out of personal experience. Okay, so we we we're traveling in this vehicle, all right? And this, as I said, this one has just come back from Malaysia, and as you see it, is how we got it back from Malaysia last Wednesday. We've done you know a little bit of tidying up, obviously, but this is this, you know went to the port in the Tacoma and. I drove it out, well, they drove out of the container for me, and here we are. So that's pretty much how it happened. Cool. So we travelled with Goldie. She didn't get to go to Malaysia. It's a long story. So um, we love our little Labrador. Oh, she's not that little. <laughs> now, we love our Labrador. And so you know what happens with Labradors, right? They, Labradors like to do two things, eat and swim. All right? So if you've ever done it, dog comes inside, the first thing they're going to do is shake. Well... 
that's okay. We don't mind if Goldie does that because we basically have built a mud room into the Earth Cruiser. So here is the actual shower. You wouldn't really obviously know what's going on here. So it doesn't look weird or anything. Um, and we can just pull the slide across. Um, Goldie can shake, clean herself up. Happy days. And it makes such a difference. I mean, if it's cold, wet and miserable, we're not going to leave her, her outside. That's not going to happen. So it's... The whole premise of an Earth Cruiser is just to be comfortable, go to those wonderful places you want to go. We love cars, we love four driving, and we love to travel. So what we've done is bring all of those things in one place. That's what's going on. So the, the cab can talk to the house, the house can talk to the cab when it comes to the suspension, the electronics, and all of those things. It's all seamless. Over here we have the command panel, and so we know very quickly what's going on and where. You know, it tells us how much water we have, It'll tell me how much solar we've got, tell me how where the batteries are, where the tanks are. So, uh, you know, so this is interesting. Okay, so everything right now is running inside the Earth Cruiser. We're making hot water and the fridge is on. We don't need any lights on just yet. And our discharge is 2.3 amps. It's nothing. Absolutely nothing. Over here, we're bringing in 3.9 amps of solar. We're parked beside a bit of a hill. So that's not a lot of solar, but the point is we're neutral. We can say we can stay here indefinitely. Very cool. When you think about it, it's really important. Yeah, very cool. So last night it got incredibly windy up here, and you'll see it's really windy still. And you can see the there's no movement on the sidewalls whatsoever. It's beautiful. They're not flapping. Um, and so what we wanted to do, just to make it comfortable, else we can close the roof while we're inside, and you still have as much room as what you would in. It's just a little over 24 inches when the roof is down. Um, from the top of the bed to the bottom of the roof. So you can sleep very, very comfortably with the roof down. So for that, for that stealth camping, that sort of stuff, if that's what you want to do, you can use everything. You can use the toilet. There's a reason why that's dropped down that way. You can use the toilet. You can use absolutely everything with the roof down. Very cool. Yeah, boring stuff, but it matters. These are, these are things that you don't, don't necessarily know until you, uh, you're in the thick of it and you want to... Be able to just pull over to the side of the road if it's if sleep. it's a yeah, scenario maybe. that you don't necessarily want to be exactly don't want to broadcasting be to the world that you're yep and, uh, and it's vulnerable it's, and as you can see I mean we, we haven't dropped all the windows but you can imagine a 360 degree view we get out of here right and again this thing is only a little over 21 foot long do you feel claustrophobic does it feel uncomfortable yeah I, I'm I'm uh, just over six feet tall and I have probably at least a foot and a half of, of headroom standing up straight. Tons of space all over. We were just talking about how uh, you know when you when you're out camping in a uh, in a tent and you gotta lay on your sleeping bag to pull your pants on. You don't have that problem here at all. This uh, is just it's, it's it's about being comfortable. Yeah, you know? and still having a fun four drive at the same time. Yeah, it's, it's not real hard, is it? Um, and so yeah, you'll um, you'll see that the um, the layout m makes sense. You know, it's typically for two people with the um, the FX model that we. We build. It's got the fixed roof. These seat, seats are, uh, can be seat belted, and so if you want four people to travel, very very comfortable. This of course turns into another bed. Um, you know, just uh, you know, depending what you want to do, you can get this table out of the way, give yourself a little bit more room still. Um, again, it's just about you know getting out there and moving and doing some stuff. You know, mm -hmm. if, you, if you want to go travel the world, or if you want to chase snow, or just you know like me, like to fly fish and get get down those places and stay there and Michelle can be in here reading a book whatever it's great it just makes sense very cool what else can I tell you I mean as you can see there's not built anything like your typical RV it's you know, there's no chipboard you know there's no wood screws nothing yeah. like that yeah you know, we've been bouncing this thing around and having a lot of fun with it can you tell Every, yeah everything stayed stayed in place and yeah. we've been doing pretty well yeah um, <clears throat> one of the questions that came through, so how can you buy one of these? Um, Earthcruiser.com, right? So either Michelle or Ashton give you all the info on them. But yeah, so they're uh, built to order in Bend, in Bend, Oregon. Very cool. Very cool. And this thing is, he was telling me that this is this is fully loaded, but every Earth Cruiser you see is pretty, pretty well much. fully loaded. Yeah. So you don't really... Yeah, I mean, you're always going to... We don't do customize, you know, we because you know, through the engineering and through the... Um, compliance that we've done to make sure everything works in, what, in whatever country you know, you're operating in. Um, we don't like custom, but we do like personalization. Mm -hmm. you know, so every customer has the opportunity to make 
make the earth because it is, you know. Uh, and that, and we strongly encourage it. I mean, that's th this is your dream machine. You know? It's, it's got to stand out. It's got to be yours. Absolutely. And I mean, the 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 price point that it comes in at isn't um, it's not necessarily what you'd pay for a, you know, for a full size fully loaded Winnebago. And this is going to be able oh, to no. do anything. And, well, there are no Winnebagos here, and there's a reason for that. Yeah. You know? Yep. There's a, yeah, there's a reason for that. Yeah, this could very easily be termed a, a budget RV that can just do a lot more than any other RV can. Life, life's for living, you know. If you want to go and spend some time on the beach in Baja, why would you not do that? Fine, drink it, mate. No, sorry, just no worries. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So what else we got there? Well, let's uh, let's just do a quick little. Uh, we'll do another little walk around to the outside. If you guys have any other questions, please feel free to ask. And then we'll, uh, I'll let Lance jump behind the wheel, and and we'll uh, we'll take this thing down. Yeah, so. let's let, let's see what it takes to pack it up, if you like. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So there you go. So Goldie can stay inside. She's quite comfortable. We'll just put the fruit basket away. I'm going to put the coffee maker over there because I get in trouble when I forget the coffee maker. And it um, comes off its perch. So just excuse me for a second while I figure that out. And for anybody who actually wants to know, the reason there's two coffee pots here is because we had all sorts of trouble getting the coffee for this particular coffee maker. So we had to go buy another one because nothing happens without coffee. That's right. It's, that's it's, right. It's a necessity of life, and that's all there is to it. It really is. All right, so now you just saw me prepare the Earth Cruiser for travel. Step out really easy. Chip, couldn't agree more. It's a, it's a fantastic looking, fantastic looking machine. And you wouldn't believe how windy it is out here. It's yeah. Y'all saw that, that was maybe a minute. That was, you know, a minute or two tops to go from sleeping to uh, to ready to roll. So I'm just gonna climb up, we're gonna make our way down. Okay. So we're up high, eye level is probably What'd you say, eight or eight or nine feet up off the ground? Uh, well, sitting here, I mean, the overall the overall height from the from the road to the top of the EC is um, exactly eight foot six. Okay, so we're at about eight foot, maybe. Yeah. So it gives you nice command of the road. It's great. Chip's got a question. What's the ground clearance off road? Uh, so you're only ever going to be as good as what you. Um, as your the diff, so that means your tyres. So with the three one fives, you've probably got about ten inches. Ten inches of ground clearance. Thereabouts. And just a pretty impressive break over and approach and departure. Obviously, just yeah. no. Yeah, balance ex front and rear is exactly the same. Yep. So if you got you get in, you've got to be able to get out. That's right. So we're just going to make our way down. It's a fun little track. It's, I mean, it's not not challenging at all, but. It's enough to give you a sense of it. Yeah. And again, it's the view. I mean, from an off-roader's perspective, to be able to see straight down, it's pretty nice. Yeah, there's no no doghouse or anything in the way, so you just, you just, you know, your toes are, are right at the front. It'll make parking easy if you, you know, you find yourself in a place where you actually need to parallel park this thing. I don't think it'd be difficult. Yep. Pretty. Exactly, do you think? On the drive up, we were coming up this hill, and I just had it in first gear, and my toe was just not even not even pressing on the accelerator, and it was just scrambling up. It's a five-liter turbo diesel I4, so just big old cylinders making lots of torque. Yeah, just let them chug away, do its thing. Yep. There's our rear view 
rear view monitor. You're going to see it because it's washed out, but you're getting a live view of what's going on behind the truck. So again, this one also has forward facing camera because, again, uh, Asia is right hand drive, and so if you're in a left hand drive vehicle, you want to be able to see what's going on coming at you. Yeah. So we can switch between left and right hand. It's uh, forward and rear facing camera. Yep. I don't, I don't know if you can hear, but there's also an exhaust brake working, uh, keeping us at a totally reasonable speed. We're in, we're in the high range in the transfer case. We're not even in low range, and, and you don't have to do anything to slow this thing down. It's just got tons of capability. Which is really nice in snow and ice because yeah. you're not having to use the foot brake, and so you, it, it, it won't lock up a wheel. Yeah. There's no, there's no wheel brake. Yeah. Until the final stop you've got complete control of what's going on. Yeah. And so if it's muddy, um, or yeah, icy, you know what it's like. It is not a lot of fun going sideways into a mm -hmm. anything, you know? Gonna get crossed up a little bit here and you're gonna just feel it. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yep. And again, you know, we've got everything that we've been traveling with for quite some time in the back of the vehicle right now. So Nothing special. They drove down from from Bend, and they've been they've been here about a week, and they just, as he said, their their life is in the back of this truck, and you would never know it. It's so clean and so tidy. There's no noise. There's not stuff floating around or flying around. It's just a very good self-contained mobile apartment. It's great. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of that beach house that you can have at any beach, any time you feel like it. Yeah. Or we'll go skiing. It's got me, got me thinking I need to just move out of my apartment and just park this on the street below and call it good. Yes, you can do it. And in fact, it creates so much um, solar power that you can actually, if you do use it as your house, you get a um, tax credit. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Quality machine. Do we have any, uh, any last minute questions? Again, apologies for the uh, apologies for some of the wind earlier. We uh, we're totally expecting it, and as you know, this is just an iPhone. This is an iPhone video, so we're kind of kind of limited a little bit. But I appreciate you guys bearing with us. We'll just kind of cruise on down a little bit longer, and I'll let you guys enjoy the view. All these gum trees make me nice. <laughs> is that what they are? So uh, where in Australia are you from? What city? Uh, so my real hometown is Coffs Harbour, which okay. is on the coast oh, wow. in New South Wales. About um, 600 miles from, you know, not quite 600 miles, probably 400 miles from Sydney, which probably most yeah. people hear about yep. Sydney. And but uh, Michelle and I left Brisbane, um, which, oh, okay. is, which is uh, about 500 miles. Coffs Harbour, so great part of the world, very yeah. nice, nice warm, sunny, very, very similar climate to California, and lots of, lots and lots of countries. And so Goldie, our Labrador, she come from Australia with us, of course, and so she uh, just also loves to live the life. And as we're driving down through these lovely gum trees here, and you'll see that the reason we have the, the roof rack and brush guards on the side is so we can push all this stuff out of the way and we don't have to worry about it you know and because of the shape of the earth cruiser wherever the cab fits um, everything fits so from a off-roader's perspective as long as your cab goes through you go through and that's that's really important yeah it's a small thing but it does matter you know this is a beautiful day but just imagine if it's wet and it's cold and mosquitoes are biting and all that fun stuff um, you don't want to have to be getting out, wondering if you tore off an awning or something stupid like that. Yeah. No, you just want to go and enjoy yourself. That's what it's all about. And as you can see, we can just idle down here all day, every day, no big deal. Just chug away. Yep. Right. There is so much braking, braking power su supplied by that exhaust brake that he's just got his toe on the on the accelerator pedal just to keep the exhaust bank from engaging and we are just cruising. Yeah. We just 
no drama at all. As I said, I, I, I can't remember if I mentioned it, we drove it up the hill and, and I just had it in gear and just barely touching it and the, the engine was just pulling the thing forward. There was no no wheel spin, I didn't have to goose the throttle or anything like that. On a little steep hill, I had to kind of just keep the engine engine boiled. It's got a nice big turbo, so you got to keep the turbo hot, but yeah. other than that, there's just absolutely no drama. You just barely tow under the power and you're and you're good. Yeah, and the, you know, the, the way we've set the suspension up, you know, keeping it all balanced front and rear side side, again, makes it comfortable. You're not getting that thrown away, thrown around feeling. It's just... You know, sometimes truck campers they try to do this a little bit too much because you've got to put airbags in them and try and keep them square and all that jazz. Because the vehicle is um, roughly 17,000 pounds standard GVM and we're only coming in at 11,000 pounds, we've got plenty of of um, of engineering room. You know where we can throw some weight forward to the axle if we need to or rearward, just so we can get a balance. And that's that's a real uh, asset that we have to. Um, to work with and it really counts it makes a really big difference absolutely I mean, it's, nothing's being taxed you know the, nothing is these things last a real long time because you know for one the little fuso was overbuilt in the very beginning and for two we're not using any of its real capacity so it's a it's a dawdle really if you want to you know, uh, really push it, it you're not um, making you're not risking too much because yeah. we're already you know, not stressing it. The way we we mount the subframe to the house and to the chassis so that you know, it, it's set up on a kinetic mounting system that we created so it evenly will put the load uh, all through the house and all through the chassis evenly. The house is allowed to move seven inches left to right before it will start to flex the chassis and vice versa. So if the chassis needs to flex for whatever reason, you're not twisting the house because all of that can be taken up inside of the uh, all of that taken be upside of the kinetic mounting system, and that's why you're not hearing any crashes and creaks and bangs, and that's why it's all getting soaked up the way it's supposed to. That's good. We we chatted about it earlier as well, where um, you know the Fuso chassis was chosen because everywhere in the world, everywhere you could possibly take this thing. There's going to be a, someone who knows how to fix it, someone who has access to parts within, you know, a few miles. So those of you who live out of the United States, you can attest that this machine is, uh, this chassis is extremely popular for, for just about everything. You know, you can, uh, you, can there, you can make shuttles out of them or you can do delivery trucks or flatbeds or steak beds or what have you. And it's going to be extremely popular and extremely reliable. And so... You know, Lance was mentioning earlier that that you know you've you've got a problem somewhere in the middle of nowhere, and you're if you're going to be able to find a parts store, if you're going to be able to find a mechanic, you're going to be able to get the help you, you need because this is just such a universal machine. Yeah. Now, di different countries do use different engines compared to their emission systems and what have you, but at, you know the basics are the same. You know, if you need if you need some help, you're going to be able to find some help. And it's not necessarily going to be something that's going to totally derail your trip if you don't get the, you know. Exactly. And we were talking about how we sync the house and the cab. You know, that really matters because, you know, the house can be autonomous by itself. You know, the house yeah. batteries can take care of themselves, truck batteries and vice versa. So, you know, if you decide you want to stay somewhere a bit longer and, you know, get the thing serviced, whatever, you're still comfortable because you haven't lost... Um, your living quarters because right. it can live by itself it doesn't rely on the truck and the truck doesn't rely on it it makes sense it's a good good way to live oh, well, life's for living it's not a rehearsal that's right I've got all these avocados I know it's uh, that time of year for sure yeah. amazing anything they seem to plant in California grows like crazy <laughs> yeah it's great isn't it well we're just uh, dawdling back to camp um, I'm going to be checking this uh, this channel for any questions and answers. I'm going to be with Lance for another few minutes. So if you have any other questions, just feel free to ask um, on, in the comments section of the video, and I'll be happy to uh, to get an answer for you if I don't know it. And then just be sure to watch, watch the Truck Trend Space in the uh, in the coming few days. We're going to have a full write-up and a full 
you know, full photo gallery of this fantastic machine. And you, again, any questions you ask me, I'll pass them along and we can, we can, uh, definitely, uh, you guys keep on rolling. <laughs> anyway. All right. Thanks Th for your time. Thank you. Really appreciate, appreciate your time, Lance. And thanks everyone for watching. Catch you later.